Welcome to the Conservation Learning Center's 2021 Virtual Field Day. We are once again releasing a series of videos showcasing our demonstrations and research projects here at the CLC. Thank you to our sponsors, the Saskatchewan Wheat Development Commission and the Saskatchewan Flax Development Commission. And a big thank you to all of our funders who support research here at the CLC. We have a couple faba bean trials here at the CLC. These trials showcase faba bean agronomy and look at the effectiveness of different faba bean inoculants. Our faba bean agronomy study is a one-year project that is funded by the Saskatchewan Pulse Growers. And our faba bean inoculant study is an adopt funded project that is also one year. Today, Zoe Galbraith is speaking with us about these trials. Zoe is the research assistant here at the CLC. Hi, my name is Zoe, and today I'm gonna to be talking about a couple of the faba bean trials we have here at the Conservation Learning Center this year. Faba beans are an attractive crop for producers in North Central Saskatchewan. They prefer cool and moist soil, so they're well suited to this region. Faba beans are the most efficient nitrogen fixer of all pulse crops grown in Western Canada and have been regarded as the next generation of plant protein due to their high grain protein content. Faba beans can also be a good substitute for peas and lentils in a crop rotation as they are moderately resistant to Aphanomyces root rot, which is a major issue in many fields across the province. The first trial I'm going to be talking about is called Demonstrating Faba Bean Inoculant Types and Application Methods. The objectives of this trial are to demonstrate different faba bean inoculant types and application methods for local producers and to provide some insights into the costs and benefits of the different inoculant types. We'd like to thank representatives from Rhodesian, Taurus, Exite Bio, Novozymes and Univar Solutions for their product donations for this trial. In past research done on faba bean inoculants in the prairies, a few differences were found between the different inoculant types and researchers concluded that in areas with high native soil rhizobia or where lots of pulse crops are grown, the type of inoculant you use may not significantly affect your yield. For this trial, we wanted to set up a demonstration of six different inoculant products for local producers to be able to compare how they perform in the Prince Albert area. Inoculants can also vary in price, and so we will be doing a simple cost analysis on all the products we're using to be able to compare gross revenue for all the treatments. We were hoping that this trial will serve as a decision-making support tool for local faba bean producers to help them plan their seeding operations in the spring. So there are three inoculant types available for faba beans. There's peat, liquid, and granular inoculants. Peat inoculants are applied on seed prior to seeding, and liquid are applied on seed or in furrow, and granular inoculants are applied in furrow. There are different benefits and challenges associated with each of these inoculant types. Peat, for example, um, it's less prone to desiccation than liquid inoculants, but has to be applied on seed prior to seeding, which creates an extra step for the farmer. Liquid products can be applied on seed or in furrow, so you can apply them to the seed um, while it's being augered into the seed box, which saves farmers a step, but it is the most prone to desiccation in hot and dry conditions. Granular inoculants are the least prone to desiccation, but tend to be the most expensive and can be bulky to handle. Uh, so for this trial, we have one uninoculated control treatment and six inoculated treatments, consisting of two different products each of peat, liquid, and granular inoculants. Um, so our peat inoculants are BASF's nodulator peat faba bean and Egtiv peat rhizo powder for pulses. The liquid inoculants are Rhodesian Primo Pulse Liquid and Exite Bio Pulse Rhizo Liquid. And our granular inoculants we're using are Tag Team Bionic, which is a new product this year, and Agtiv Pulses Granular. So we applied the peat and liquid inoculants on seed prior to seeding, and the granular was applied at the time of seeding in furrow. We seeded Snowbird Low Tannin Faba Beans at a rate of 45 plants per meter squared. The faba beans were seeded two inches deep on May 11th using the CLC's Fabro Plot Seeder with double disc openers and 10 inch row spacing. We also mid row banded MAP uh, about three inches deep. Post Ultra was used as our post emergent herbicide for control of grassy weeds on June 22nd and we applied Moravis Neo 300 SE fungicide on July 12th. The second faba bean trial I'm going to be talking about today is called Faba Bean Agronomy to Enhance Yield, Hasten Maturity and Reduce Disease and it's a Saskatchewan Pulse Growers funded project. 
The objectives of this project are to demonstrate how early seeding can impact yield and lead to an earlier harvest, to demonstrate how seeding rates affect uh, disease maturity and yield, and to demonstrate the capacity for foliar fungicide to reduce disease, improve yields, and potentially delay maturity. This project is very relevant to local producers as disease and maturity are two of the major issues facing faba bean production. In past research, um, we've found that earlier seeding is preferential for faba beans to lead to a timely harvest. Um, our past research has also shown that low plant densities of only about 20 to 30 plants per meter squared are required for maximum yield. However, low densities like this tend to lead to issues with weed competition and maturity. Uh, fungicide is also shown to reduce disease in faba beans, but it may delay maturity and past research has shown that it may only lead to minimal or no improvements in yield or seed size differences. So this trial is set up with two seeding dates, uh, early versus delayed, two seeding rates, 45 versus 65 plants per meter squared, and two fungicide treatments, so untreated versus foliar fungicide applied. Now we seeded snowbird faba beans here again, as they are the most dominant variety grown in Western Canada. They have relatively early maturity, they're potentially high yielding, and have a medium seed size. They were seeded on May 11th for the early treatment and May 31st for the delayed treatment. They were seeded two inches deep with the CLC's Fabro plot seeder with double disc openers and 10 inch row spacing. And we applied MAP uh, mid row banded about three inches deep. All treatments in this case were inoculated with Agtiv Pulse's granular inoculant. And we used Post Ultra as a post-emergent herbicide on June 22nd. This growing season so far at the Conservation Learning Centre has been pretty warm and dry. Our faba beans are doing quite well considering, but would definitely benefit from some more moisture. Uh, the month of May was pretty dry. We had low precipitation, but we did receive about 25 millimetres of rain about two weeks after seeding the majority of these faba beans. And in the month of June, we received about 80 millimetres of rain total. So thank you for watching and please remember to tune in to the Conservation Learning Centre's website this winter to see the results of these trials.